Hello my AP Calculus PC friends. Welcome to our first video in a short series of three videos that will address the topic 9.5, which is really about integration and antiderivatives of vector value functions. We're really going to just look at three separate kinds of problems, and the first of which is an indefinite integral uh, of a vector value function. Let's take a look at our example here. Notice the uh, integration rules table that's provided here basically just kind of outlines the same fact that we've already seen before with limits and derivatives, is that you're going to do your work in isolation. In other words, if R of t is defined by f of t i plus g of t j, f and g were going to be continuous functions on the closed interval a, b. If we want to integrate vector r, we just simply integrate the piece that's in front of the i and integrate the piece that's in front of the j. It's exactly as you would have thought. Now I'm going to do a little bit something different with these boundaries of integration. I wrote them like this so that they are going to be at least hopefully <laughs> drawing your attention because it's probably the most common mistake that I see with integration of vector valued functions. So we'll take a look at how I deal with those in our first example. And then of course if you uh, want to resolve a definite integral you just do your two separate problems uh, in isolation and then it's always important to remember that the answer to any type of these integration problems is still going to be a vector. Use ij form, use your vector bracket form, Either one is acceptable. So if we take a look at our first example here, number one, we find that our approach is going to be fairly intuitive. We're going to integrate t squared times i with respect to t separate from the integration of the natural log of t times i, or times j, sorry, with respect to t. Now, the integration of t squared is quite easy. We would get t to the third over 3. But the way that I like to resolve the constant is to do it right away, because I'm afraid that if I linger and move on to the j component, I might forget to add in these constants. So I just simply call the first constant c1. You, you probably want to call them by some different name using subscripts. And attach the i and then you're all set to go. All we got to do now is integrate natural log of t. We're halfway done. Well, that's a little easier said than done. That's one of the reasons why I like this problem so much is that it does have a very interesting integration piece here. If you recall, the integration of natural log of t has to be done using integration by parts. There is no other way other than to say memorize it. And so what we do is we let the u portion be natural log of t because it would be silly to let the dv be that natural log because you can't integrate him anyway. The derivative of that natural log of t, of course, is 1 over t with respect to t. And for the v, we integrate dt, and we, we of course, are going to get t. So that allows us to piece together our integration formula, which is going to say u times v, or t times the natural log of t in that order. And then we subtract the integration of the v multiplied by the du. Well, the, the v multiplied by the du is just the integration of 1 with respect to t, which of course is going to give us t. So when all the dust settles, this is what you would have for the indefinite integration of natural log of t. And of course, in general, you would have a constant. Now for our particular problem, we're going to take this t ln of t minus t in parentheses and then add our constant that we'll use a subscript of 2 for. And then don't forget, it's very important that we attach that j. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you don't write this in some kind of a vector form, whether it's using ij notation, or as I said before, the bracket notation, you technically have an incorrect answer, and it would not be scored as correct. So this would be your alternative approach. One thing I'd like 
about this particular topic, especially as we're moving towards the waning days of AP Calc BC instruction, is that it gives you guys another great chance to review some of your integration formulas and integration techniques. Got two more videos left for you for this topic. Be sure to stick around for them. As always, thanks for joining.